Welcome back. In this module, we're going to be talking about basic atomic structure, and this is the first module in the chemistry section of the ATIT 7 science course. So let's get into it. So basic atomic structure is based on the fact that all matter is made up of atoms. So everything in this world, whether it is this pencil or the microphone, or this piece of paper, everything is made up of atoms. And an atom is composed of a central nucleus with positively charged protons and neutrally charged neutrons. So we can see that over here, this is a carbon atom. We have our nucleus here with our protons and neutrons. And negatively charged electrons surround the nucleus. So we can see all these orbitals around and that houses our electrons on those orbitals and those are negatively charged. Atoms can bond together to make molecules. So different, this is a carbon atom, but carbon can bond with different atoms, whether it's oxygen, hydrogen, different uh, structures of atoms will make up molecules. And if atoms have an equal number of protons and electrons, then they're equally neutral. If they're not equal, then the atom is positively or negatively charged and is an ion. So this carbon atom right here is neutral because we have six electrons and then we have six protons. But if we had one less, say this electron was not there, then this would be a positively charged ion because we would have one extra proton which is positively charged. In comparison, if we had seven electrons on the outside and only six in the nucleus, then we would have a negatively charged ion because we have an extra electron. Elements are composed of a specific type of atom with a set form, mass, and structure. Each element has its own identifiable atomic number and atomic mass. Protons and neutron mass is approximately equal to one atomic mass unit. Okay, so basic atomic structure. The atomic number tells how many protons, which are positively charged, are in the nucleus of an atom. This determines the atom's chemical properties and is located in the periodic table of elements all atoms of a given element must have the same atomic number. So we can see this is the atomic symbol. So this would be, if you're looking at like a periodic table or something, it'd be like the big C for carbon or the big H for hydrogen. And the atomic number is at the bottom left, and that is the number of protons. Now the number above is the mass number, and then we have the atomic symbol. So the mass number, also known as the atomic mass, is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in an atom. Electron mass is so small that it's basically insignificant. So isotopes are members of a family of elements that all have the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons. So we can see up here, this is carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14. So we can see this one has uh, six protons and eight neutrons. This one has six protons and seven neutrons because it's 13. And this has six protons and six neutrons because it's 12 here. So those are all different isotopes. And in the periodic table, atoms are arranged by their atomic numbers, so the number of protons, in increasing order. So here's an example down here. We have the carbon, we have the number of protons, so the atomic number down here, and then the mass number, so the number of protons plus electrons. So we know that there's six electrons in this atom. All right, so let's talk about a practice problem. So what is the total number of neutrons in the nucleus of a neutral atom that has 19 electrons and a mass number of 39? So the mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons. So that is going to be 39. Protons and electrons should be equal because the atom is neutral. 
if there are 19 electrons plus the number of neutrons, that's going to equal 39. So that's subtract 19 electrons from both sides. So we figure out that the number of neutrons is 20. So that would be our answer. So let's talk about electrons. Electrons are subatomic particles that orbit the nucleus at various levels or shells. So this is our nucleus, which has our protons and neutrons, and around it we have all of these different orbits or shells. So the closest one is called the K-shell, and that only houses two electrons. After that, we then have the L-shell, M-shell, and N-shell. So you don't need to memorize these cells, but you should know the one closest only holds two electrons. Electrons can occupy orbits that are varying distances away from the nucleus and tend to occupy the lowest energy level they can. So what that means is electrons will always fill the K shell, the closest shell first, before they move on to the L shell. You won't have an atom that only has the N shell full. It always starts at the lowest option. So it starts closest and then works its way out as each orbital gets full. If the atom has all of its electrons in the lowest available orbit, it has a stable electron arrangement. The outermost electron shell of an atom in its uncombined state is known as the valence shell. So the valence shell is the outermost shell that is filled. So if we look down at this example, the valence shell is this outer shell because it has one electron on that shell and it's the outermost one that is filled. The electrons that are there are called valence electrons and it is the number that determines bonding behavior. Atoms tend to react in a manner that will allow them to fill or empty their valence shells. All right, so let's talk about, where am I going to put me? I'm going to put, I'll go right there. Okay, so chemical bonds, electron shells. So chemical bonds involve a negative positive attraction between an electron or electrons in the nucleus of an atom or nuclei of more than one atom. The attraction keeps the atoms cohesive, but also enables the formation of bonds among other atoms and molecules. Each of the four energy levels or shells of an atom has a maximum number of electrons they can hold. Each level must be completely filled before the electrons can be added to the valence level. The further away from the nucleus an electron is, the more energy it has. So the first shell or the K shell holds two electrons, the second the L shell holds eight, the third the M shell holds 18, and the fourth the N shell holds 32. So that is listed here. Chemical bonds form and break between atoms when atoms gain, lose, or share electrons in the outer valence shell. Polar bonds refer to a covalent type of bond with a separation of charge. One end is negatively charged and the other is positive. The hydrogen-oxygen bond in water is one example of a polar bond. So we can look over here. We have two atoms of chlorine that are having a non-polar covalent bond. So bonding electrons are shared equally between the two atoms and there's no charges on the atoms. Then we have a polar covalent bond. So we can kind of see this side is positive and this side is negative. It's kind of pulling and bonding electrons share unequally between the atoms and there are partially charges on the atoms. And then we have an ionic bond. This is a complete transfer of one or more valence electrons and full charges on resulting ions. So this one, the sodium is losing an electron to the chloride. All right, so ions. Most atoms are neutral since the positive charge of protons in the nucleus is balanced by the negative charge of the surrounding electrons. Electrons are transferred between atoms when they come into contact with each other. This creates a molecule or atom in which the number of electrons does not equal the number of protons, which gives it a positive or negative charge. A negative ion is created when an atom gains an electron, and a positive ion is created when an atom loses an electron. An ionic bond is formed between ions with opposite charges, and the resulting compound is neutral. So 
if we look over here, we have this is sodium and this has one electron on its outer orbitals. This is the valence electron and it has 11 protons in the nucleus and it has 11 electrons on the outside so its net charge is zero. But say something comes along like down here with this chlorine and it says, hey, I'm gonna steal this valence electron because it will make me more stable and better and I want it. Well, then we are missing that electron. So now we have 10 pro we have 10 electrons on the outside and 11 protons on the inside. And that means we have one extra proton and which has a positive charge. So this ion is now a positive ion. So it would be written Na1 plus because it has a positive net charge. So now let's talk about some chemical bonds between atoms. So atoms of the same element may bond together to form molecules or crystalline solids. When two or more different types of atoms bind together chemically, a compound is made. The physical properties of compounds reflect the nature of the interaction among molecules. A union between the electron structures of atoms is called chemical bonding. An atom may gain, give, or share its electrons with another atom it bonds with. And there are three types of chemical bonds. So we have an ionic bond. When an atom gains or loses an electron, it becomes negatively or positively charged, turning it into an ion. An ionic bond is a relationship between two oppositely charged ions. We can see an example of an ionic bond here. So a complete transfer or one of more valence electrons. So that sodium is losing the electron to the chloride and full charges on resulting ions. So we have a positive and a negative. Then we can have a covalent bond. So atoms that share electrons have what is called a covalent bond. Electrons share equally have a nonpolar, while electrons shared unequally have a polar. So we can see a covalent bond is here between the hydrogen and the oxygen, and this is a uh, polar bond, that just this right here, because we have, that's why it's shaped in this way. And then we have hydrogen bond. So the atoms of molecules interacts with a hydrogen atom in the same area. Hydrogen bonds can also form between two different parts of the same molecule as in the structure of DNA in larger molecules. So right here, we have a hydrogen bond. Also, just to go back to this is, so if we have a neutral atom and it loses an electron, it becomes a cation and is positively charged. And if we have a neutral atom and it gains an electron, it becomes an anion. So a cation is positively charged in its form when an atom loses an electron, and an anion is negatively charged and is formed when an atom gains one or more electrons. So let's talk some more about ionic bonding. So this is the transfer of electrons from one atom to another is called ionic bonding. Atoms that lose or gain electrons are referred to as ions, and the gain or loss of electrons will result in an ion having a positive or negative charge. So again, We've looked at this example quite a bit, but you have your sodium with the one valence electron and the chloride and one electron from sodium is transferred to the chloride to make one cation and another anion. So we have our cation is the sodium, it has a positive charge, and our anion is the chloride, has a negative charge. And these charges attract to form a bond. Then we have a covalent bond. So covalent bonding is characterized by the sharing or one or more pairs of electrons between two atoms or between an atom and another covalent bond. This produces an attraction to repulsion stability that holds these molecules together. Atoms have a tendency to share electrons with each other so that all outer electron shells are filled. The resulting bonds are always stronger than the intermolecular hydrogen bonds and are similar in strength to ionic bonds. So we have a normal fluorine atom here, and it can covalently bond to another fluorine atom. So these two dots represents the electrons that are being shared. 
So they're sharing the two electrons on their outer rings. So let's talk about electronegativity. So electronegativity is a measure of how capable an atom is of attracting a, attracting a pair of bonding electrons. It refers to the fact that one atom exerts slightly more force in a bond than another, causing, creating a dipole. If the electronegative difference between two atoms is small, the atom will form a polar covalent bond. And if the difference is large, the atoms will form an ionic bond. When there is no electronegativity, a pure nonpolar covalent bond will form. So right here we have a bond dipole. And that is the fact that one atom exerts slightly more for force on the bond than another. So there's a little bit more force on one side than the other. Then there is another bond dipole. So we can see this is a water molecule and we can see the pull in. And then we have our covalent bond. So no charge on atoms, electrons are shared equally. Highly electron density over here, a polar bond. They are partially shared on atoms, electrons are shared unequally. So again, we have our negative and positive side and ionic, the full charge on atoms, electrons is transferred. So those are the different types of bonds. All right, so compounds. An element is the most basic type of matter. The smallest unit of an element is an atom. A chemical combination of two or more types of elements is called a compound. So compounds often have properties that are very different from those of their constituent elements. The smallest independent unit of an element or compound is known as a molecule. And elements and compounds are represented by chemical symbols, one or two letters, most often the first in the element's name and more than one atom of the same element in a compound is represented with the subscript number designating how many atoms of the element are present. Water contains two hydrogens and one oxygen, so the chemical formula is H with subscript 2, O, and methane contains one carbon and four hydrogens, so its formula is C, H, lowercase 4, or subscript 4, sorry. So this is an element of water and you have your oxygen and your hydrogen that are bound to it, creating this element. So that is it for this module. So make sure to take the quiz and I will see you in the next module. See you there, bye.